Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All, time for another gym video. <laughs> you guys are gonna get sick and tired of the Honda dealership behind me. Anyway, I've got a an interview today with, or a chat with somebody who I'm not going to say because it's not in the can yet, but anyway, I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully that will come out tomorrow. So anyway, stay tuned for that one. It should be really good. And of course, once I find out, I'll let people on Discord and Twitter and everything know about the interview. In fact, folks on Discord already know. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today is some updates that Elon Musk gave concerning the whole Raptor explosion thing. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one if you haven't seen that. But anyway, let's call it a fireball, an anomaly. <laughs> it wasn't really a full-on explosion. So anyway, but uh, Elon Musk, um, this was about, gosh, 18 hours ago now. <laughs> he, he said, most importantly, we need to delete or thermally protect uh, remaining secondary structure so we can remove shrouds. So this was discussing the Raptor 2, Raptor 1 thing. They still have heat shrouds across the bottom of the like where the engines are. So it's it's like thermal protection because of course, as of, especially on the booster, there's 33-ish engines that are going to be firing at once and that generates a whole bunch of heat and a bunch of turbulence and things like that. And so basically Elon Musk was saying that they are trying to get rid of those shrouds that they have. And that's kind of the topic of conversation that follows through in several tweet threads here. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, the, the everyday astronaut Tim Dodd said, well, I'm sure glad we mentioned shrouds in the video. By the way, if you haven't watched his video on Raptor 1 versus Raptor 2, you should definitely watch that. That's very good. And, and he said, you know, I'm glad we mentioned it in the video. It would have been embarrassing if I left out the most important thing. So anyway, <laughs> to that, Elon said, all mass necessitated by an engine design should count should count as engine mass e.g. shrouds tvc hydraulic which is thrust vector control hydraulic power or excess purge gas raptors in production now have electric tvc saving over a ton of hydraulics mass on the booster so that would be a ton across i assume all 33 engines so basically you have a couple of choices with thrust vector control and that's the gimbling of the engines you know right think think about this as balancing a broom on your fingertip right you're balancing it way up there and you're moving your fingertip back and forth the gimbling of the of the engines is what allows you to do that balancing that moving back and forth part so the thrust vector control gimbling etc one of the choice is choices is hydraulics and hydraulics is a whole system where you have to generate power you have to then run um, you know some sort of hydraulic fluid like an oil through a line and that then generates pressure which pushes things around the other option and you could do that you can generate that pressure and everything via the turbo pumps like bleeding off some of the power off of that another option and i wouldn't have immediately thought that this would be more viable but uh, apparently this is what they're using with uh with uh, starship and with booster is to do an electronic system so you basically have a big battery that is um that is running an, an engine pump or sorry a motor pump so an electrical motor pump that is then uh, increasing the pressure you know to create the the gimbal of capability and and starship uh actually as tim dodd noted yesterday these things can gimbal up to 15 degrees which is a really really big amount it doesn't sound like that much but it's actually a really large amount and they can gimbal very very quickly so these are all like important elements of this and so you know a ton off of the mass of a vehicle is actually a lot over time that's going to increase whatever payload you can get to orbit by about a ton or so so, so it's very important if they're doing that um scott manley <laughs> i love this conversation thread with tim dodd and scott manley he said so is the electrical power for that coming from batteries have you done the trades on a generator on the turbo pump shaft versus battery so that's what exactly what i was talking about so you know bleeding off power off the turbo pump which is generating uh, which is you know producing the fuel flow for the thrust itself versus running it off of a battery and elon musk responded to that electric power for booster and ship is needed even when engines aren't running so basically he's saying they need some battery operated things and therefore batteries just to run all of the navigation controls and all of the other stuff and i and i assume also the um the grid fins at the top of the booster as well so they they need all of this anyway to be running on a battery electrical system anyway and then he said um <clears throat> 
and the incremental power draw of TVC thrust vector control isn't too bad. <laughs> it's a little, little loose about exactly what that means. We have local super caps or super capacitors on each engine to deal with power spikes. And I was like, oh, cool. Because super capacitors have been a thing that people have talked about for Tesla vehicles for a long time. So I actually responded to that and said, hey, it's good to see that, you know, super capacitors are being used in some parts of things with SpaceX, at least, if not with, um, with Tesla. So anyway, so the super capacitors, what they would do is charge those up and then if they had to gimbal the system really fast. So the deal with the super capacitor is as opposed to a battery, it can discharge really rapidly. So you can charge it up over time and then if you have to gimbal quickly, the super capacitor can discharge, then charge up and then if it has to gimbal quickly, it can discharge really quickly. So the advantage of the super capacitor is that it's able to move very, or it's able to generate a lot of power very, very quickly. So you can use it for very high speed gimbling which actually probably allows higher speed gimbling than doing it off of the turbo pump i would imagine and then we get pranay patol said removing shrouds will result in a huge weight decrease that's a big step up however elon apart from the heat do you think that the engines and the secondary structure need some sort of protection let's say from dust debris or unwanted objects to which Elon responded, some small tubes and wiring need to be nested in bigger tube for thermal protection, kind of like conduit in a house. So I think what he's saying is like little pieces that might be sensitive to dust and debris hitting it, you would put it, you'd have a sheath, some sort of sheathing thing to protect them. <clears throat> And then he says, engines themselves and booster base are extremely robust. High strength stainless steel is bulletproof to a handgun at around 2.5 millimeters thickness. I, <laughs> I guess that's true. I'll have to trust him about that. He said the booster dome is four millimeters. So basically it's, you know, not quite twice as thick as something that would already be bulletproof to a fairly high energy impact. So essentially what he's saying is that some of the more sensitive things, they'll just put it inside of a shroud, inside of some sort of she thing to protect it, but that most of the big items, elements are pretty robust to, you know, any kind of thing. So you can think immediately when you take off on the shockwave from the, from the engines hits the ground, it, things are going to bounce up. And so you can have high velocity dust. Once this thing gets going fast, right? <laughs> Nothing's going to be hitting it because it's moving so quickly. Everything's being sucked out the back end. So this is mostly probably at the beginning as they fire it, stuff could bump, bounce up from the ground and, you know, impact it. So, so that's the thing that, that uh, Pranay Patol was concerned about. And that's what Elon was responding to there. And then he says, enabling engines to take the heat without shrouds might save over 10 tons, all things considered. So remember, the, the doing battery-operated thrust vector control saves them a ton on the vehicle. Getting rid of the shrouds and stuff could save them 10 tons. So that's like 10x more stuff. So this is not something that's an easy thing to do. Obviously, they would have done it already, but it will save a lot of weight if they can do it. Uh, Elon continued saying, shrouds are also a risk in that fuel leaks could be contained by the shroud forming a MOX or methane oxygen bomb. So that's the same kind of thing. I mean, we did not see that because it was clearly outside of the shroud. But if, for example, methane and oxygen got trapped in the shroud, which is just kind of, basically they're just big, not blankets because they're hard, but you can think of them like that, right? They're like those old asbestos tiles back in the day before they got rid of them. But that kind of like thing where it's just this, this sheet of stuff. And so it's really easy to trap behind that in the air pocket that's behind that methane and oxygen and stuff like that. So it could become a bomb and blow up the whole thing. So that would be really, really terrible. So obviously it's a risk as well. And so he continued on saying that Booster is currently purging all 33 engine shrouds in flight to prevent this. So that means there's a whole other like stuff <laughs> that they're using, right? Which is just, I assume some sort of fans, <laughs> fancy fans that are just blowing air out as fast as possible to evacuate the methane out of that area to keep any kind of MOX bomb. Never heard of that before, but you know, methane oxygen bomb potential from happening. So so that's actually really a big deal. And I would assume that getting rid of some of that is part of the reason why 
uh, they would save so much weight. It's not just the weight of the shroud, but all of this other stuff. They have to have electrical systems. They have to have these fans blowing. Every single engine, 33 of these things, have to have some sort of exhausting, you know, uh, fan going on or something like that, just pumping out this, this stuff and bringing in fresh air. So there's a lot of weight involved in that. So you can tell that they're not only working on robustness right now, but working on get, shedding every single kilo of weight that they can off of this booster. Because every kilo of weight, that stuff that you know, until the booster stops firing at about two and a half minutes into the flight, that's all weight that it's carrying the whole time. Like fuel gets less and less and less as you know as it gets more empty and it, it flies further. But that stuff that they're dealing with that's just a kind of a fixed cost, it's like weight that's part of the booster permanently. Every kilo that you can get rid of on that is really, really helpful. And so, you know, that's that's what they're looking at for this right now. So anyway, I just wanted to do a quick update on this. I think it's really interesting, you know, Elon's starting to get in. These aren't really super detailed, but they are getting into the nitty gritty about not just designing these engines, the Raptor 2 engines, but also how the whole booster is put together and how it's utilizing these engines and how they're trying to shed weight in any way they can. All right, anyway, I hope you guys are having a good time. See, <laughs> my seat always goes back. It tells me it's time for me to end my video. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a lovely day. Remember to stay tuned for that interview tomorrow. And in the meantime, I will talk see you in the next one. Bye-bye.